It was one of the most feared high-performance weapons of the 20th century. When it appeared in the skies over Korea, it sent the unsuspecting West spiraling into a state of shock. It was the Russian-made MiG-15. We were at full throttle, doing as fast as we could go, and we were barely keeping up with it. The Russian jet outclassed everything in the sky, astonishing American pilots with its lightning maneuverability and intense firepower. We could hit the MiG a number of times, and the MiG wouldn't necessarily go down. But if the MiG hit an F-86 with those cannons, the F-86 was not going to make it home. But under the umbrella of the Cold War, this deadly game of aerial combat held a dark secret that threatened to throw the world into nuclear war. Using unique Soviet archive film and color reenactments, just four years, MiG-15s would be shooting down American and British planes over Korea. The MiG-15 had a maximum speed of 652 miles per hour and was capable of flying at 50,000 feet. It was given powerful armament with two 23mm and a single 37mm cannon. Most of the pilots who flew the MiG-15 were enormously impressed. My first impressions are hard to describe in words. In the MiG-15, the conditions for the pilot were wonderful. It was designed with love. The view was fantastic because the cockpit was right at the front of the plane. While I was flying, it was like gliding over a precipice. The MiG-15 at first sight seemed to me to be like a new day in aviation. I can't describe it in words. It was indescribable. First of all, silence, as if the plane was standing still on Earth. No vibrations, no noise. On May Day 1950, the MiG-15 flew past an unsuspecting audience in Moscow's Red Square in full view of Western diplomats. The intelligence failure of the Western observers to recognize Stalin's new powerful weapon in the skies above would have disastrous consequences. MiGs were already in the throes of full-scale production. The sudden appearance of this new Soviet jet fighter would throw the West into a state of shock. The stage was now set for the first jet versus jet encounters in fighter combat and a new chapter in the history of air war. From the Alamo and the Archer, the Sukhois use the long-range AAML and very long-range anti-AWACS weapon. The naval Sukhois, the 27K and the SU-33s, carry a centerline KH-41 Mosquito anti-shipping missile and a clutch of long-range weapons. As Sukhoi progress by bettering a basically superb machine, what are they up against in the 21st century? Dassault has invested heavily in Rafale. June the 8th, 1995, the Dassault 1 single-seater shot down a Mica missile guided by a new radar developed by Dassault. Rafale comes in different sizes, with a two-seater, a single-seater, a naval version, and it should replace half a dozen strike interceptor and reconnaissance types in the French Air Force. Another aircraft in competition with Sukhoi will be Eurofighter, which progresses as we head towards the millennium. It's a joint venture between Germany, Britain, Italy and Spain, with each country contributing in the development. In September 1996, DA-2, or Development Aircraft 2, in the capable hands of test pilot John Turner, gave a well-paced performance at Farnborough 96. 
He was limited in power with two Tornado engines instead of the planned Eurojet 200 engines. The West was in for some shocks. From a Sukhoi. It'll cruise long range at supersonic speeds without afterburners. And it uses stealth technology to beat advanced radar defense systems. <laughs> 